So to begin this process, I'm going to go in and we want to start to experiment in the Y axis. So let's close our brush palette. And we've got our Y symmetry on with radial and a radial count of eight. Let's demonstrate with the standard brush. So we can increase our Z intensity to get a stronger brush application on the surface. So holding the Alt key to apply subtractions and simply just clicking and dragging to apply additions. So here you'll see I'm going vertically across that surface in Y space. So you can get some very interesting effects going across in the Y space, just sculptural additions, as well as being able to hold the Shift key and now smooth across to make smooth adjustments to these sculpture details. Now let's undo this. And some other ways that we can apply in the Y space, you'll see I can actually use the alignment around the mesh to simply go in here and do sculptural adjustments around the surface. So treating this similar to say a pottery wheel. So spinning around an axis and you're simply using your hands or your fingers to go through and apply sculpture details. So we're treating this very similar to that in the Y space. And as I'm applying, you'll see that the radial count of eight is leaving a little bit of space between these points. So this could give me access to make more interesting sort of details if I wanted to go in and make some sort of design or pattern and sculpt across the surface like so. But we also have the option to increase our radial count, which is going to give us more points. So let's increase this up to around 50. So with more points, as I go around the surface, you'll see we get a more even distribution around this area. So just using the standard brush to kind of go in, I could hold the Alt key to do subtractions and then make a bigger draw size and hold Shift and go in and make some smoothing adjustments here. So the more radial count points we have, the smoother that line transition is going to be, which we can now start to really begin to push this. So let's decrease our Z intensity a little bit. So we're not applying too strong. And now I can go in here and begin to sculpt across all of this surface to get a very nice clean building effect around this surface. So the brush application, the type of brush you're using, standard brush is a very soft sort of effect. So it's just giving these nice clean brush strokes. And as we begin to make changes to the mesh, you'll see that the mesh resolution, if I look at these polygons here, the resolution of 128 in our DynaMesh tab may need to be updated to give us a cleaner surface. So with DynaMesh, we can simply hold control, drag on the canvas, and this is going to resurface those areas. So it's going to add more polygons in the areas that it needs to. And now I can go and hold the shift key to start to smooth this out. If we want to get a cleaner surface or increase the resolution, we can simply go into DynaMesh now and let's increase our DynaMesh resolution, control drag on the canvas. And now we're going to get a jump in active points. So this is going to actually give me more vertex points for a cleaner surface. So finding that right resolution you need, if DynaMesh 128 isn't enough, we can simply adjust that. And now my brush strokes and applications on the surface are going to be much nicer and much cleaner as we're in a higher resolution state. Now for this example, I just want to make a very simple cup or chalice. So here we're just experimenting with the standard brush. And also to take note, we are working in perspective. So if you'd like, we could disable perspective so we can see a nice orthographic front view and simply rotating around, holding the shift key while rotating to lock to orthographic side views or front views or top views. And this will give me a clear perspective to go through as opposed to having perspective on which might have a slight bit of distortion while modeling. Let's go disable perspective. And I'm going to experiment by changing from the standard brush to the move brush. So we still have the same number of points. And the move brush is simply going to, depending on our draw size, grab a portion of that surface and actually go through and pull this away. So we can use the standard brush to do small details and things like this, but we can use the move brush to do large global changes to this surface. Now here I want to complete sort of a cup or a handle for this cup. So simply increasing my draw size will give me a bigger brush selection area to go through and pull out a portion of this mesh. So finding that right draw size. And here I'm simply adjusting my draw size by pressing the S key, which gives me a quick access to the draw size slider. We can also go up to the draw size slider at the top and adjust it here. But using the S key, wherever I have my cursor, when I press it, this is going to put my cursor right over the slider to make quick and easy adjustments. So adjusting my draw size to fit the area that I'd like to make movements to. Let's re-dynamesh that surface as it's getting a little stretched out. And now just simply holding the shift key and going across and smoothing on my mesh. So here you'll see that the smoothing effect is the mesh has now jumped up to around a million points, which is a fairly dense mesh. So holding the shift key and going across and smoothing is taking a longer time to go through and smooth this out. 
So we can easily jump back and forth in our Dynamesh resolution by going up or going down. So we can simply go into our resolution. Let's take this down to around 200 and control drag on the surface, which is going to bring this down about half of what it was before. So now as I go in and hold the shift key and smooth, you'll see I get a much stronger effect, which will make it very easy to bounce back and forth, go through and smooth out any details if I want to simply just build the base mesh shape here and then increase our resolution later if needed. So let's finish this off by sort of shrinking this in, creating more of a handle-like shape. And I'm gonna resurface this and destroy just a few of these details so I can get a cleaner view of the overall shape. Now here, this is looking fairly good. Let's give it just a more interesting base. And now I wanna go in Let's do one more control drag to resurface this guy. And now I want to go in and do some additional details, which we can make use of that standard brush. So going across with a higher amount of these radial points, we can now decrease our draw size and go in and we can start to make slight extrusions as well as some subtractions just to give this a bit more detail. And then let's resurface this to give it more resolution. As I'm going in to do these types of details, I don't have as clean of a surface. So these types of details might be better served if I go now, let's go in and undo these. And let's now increase our resolution to say around 400 once we've got a nice base shape and jump this back up. So we're at 2.2 million. And now making these types of brush applications are gonna be much cleaner as we've got more points. And let's just do a few more of these types of details on that surface. So if I want to max out my radial, I can simply put this at a maximum of 100, which is going to give me the most amount of points for a clean, smooth effect as I'm going through and sculpting on this surface. So you can see it's very easy to go through and take away areas or go through and do even some more creative details. For this example, let's reduce our point count. And we can go in and start to do some sort of spiraling effects across this surface. And if we want a stronger brush application, let's go in and increase that draw size or increase that Z intensity size. And now we can start to add sculpture details across this surface and begin to blend around. It may be increasing our radial, putting our Z intensity back lower to blend this surface and do any sort of smoothing effects as we go along. And if you notice inside of the cup, I have some remaining sculpture detail. If I want to fix this and create a cleaner bowl shape in here, if we hold the shift key, we can go in and try and smooth this out. However, you'll see we're dealing with around 2.2 million points. And with our smooth at the maximum Z intensity of 100, I'm still not quite getting the smooth effect I need. In cases like this, we can simply reduce our point count resolution with Dynamesh by simply going into the resolution. And let's put this down to 150 and resurface this. Now, as we continue to go lower, we're going to start to lose some of our details. So we don't want to go too low. So setting this to a value, this is now around 300,000. And holding the shift key, I get a much cleaner effect when smoothing across. If we still can't quite smooth all of this out, we can also access an additional smooth brush without needing to go down too low in resolution and lose some of our details. To do this, we can go into the light box tab, open up our brush tab. And in here, we have a smooth brush folder. So double clicking this, you'll find some additional brushes that don't exist inside of the brush palette that we can load. Within this folder, you'll see we have a smooth, stronger brush. So double clicking this, this is going to assign this to the default shift key. So holding shift, you'll see now we have the smooth, stronger brush. And this will set this as the default brush in the session of ZBrush. So if we were to close ZBrush, it would reset, which we can also reset this brush back to default by clicking the B key to open up the brush palette and clicking reset all brushes. So let's keep this smooth, stronger brush assigned. And now going across the surface, you'll see we get a much stronger effect to go in and smooth across and polish up some of these details. Now, if I were to smooth some of these surfaces below, you'll see that we're destroying some of this sculpture detail, which can be to your benefit if you want to go through and really polish out some of these details. However, if we undo this and we open up the brush palette by clicking B and then click the reset all brushes, now, when I hit the shift key, you'll see we're back to the default smooth brush. And smoothing across the surface, you'll see, has a less destructive effect. So we can experiment with using both of those brushes if needed. Now that we've polished this up and we've focused on using only the move and standard brush, 
Let's finish this cup up by experimenting with the Damien standard brush. So I'm going to go into my radial count here and reduce this a little bit lower. And let's just do a brush application with the standard. Now here you can see we have a nice soft round tip brush. Now selecting the Damien standard and going in and doing a brush stroke. You'll see by default, this brush is in the reverse order. So clicking and dragging is actually subtracting. So the brush preset itself is currently set to Z sub. Holding the Alt key will do the reverse of this and now build this up on top of the surface. And using the Damien standard, you'll see it has a finer sort of pinched line that gives you a different effect for more polished out details. So we can use this to create more hard edges on top of these surfaces, as well as polishing up some of these final details here. So let's undo those strokes. And to finish this up, let's increase our resolution back to 400. And I'll control drag to redynamesh. We should be around 2.2 million. Now, any remaining surfaces that we may want to smooth, we can go in with the shift key and polish these out. Or we can also, if we undo these actions, leaving this at around 2 million, we can also go into the deformation palette and we can simply use the polish slider, which will apply a polish to the overall mesh itself. So this will go through and just polish out any of those little artifacts left over from the low resolution state. And now we can go in and finish this up. Using the Damien standard brush for this, if I wanted to go through and say create a pinched line or a hard edged line, we could find our radial count here. So let's increase this a little bit more so we get less space between our points. And simply holding the Alt key, we can now go in and create some nice clean hard edged lines. And we can simply hold control and drag to resurface this to give it a cleaner mesh for further detail. So continuing to build on top. And while we're using Dynamesh, we also, let's undo that Dynamesh action there. Within Dynamesh, we have the option to turn on the Polish mode. So the Polish mode will look at surfaces where we have vertex points very close together and it'll create a nice, clean, polished line. So enabling this operation, let's control drag on the surface. And you'll see Dynameshing with this mode gives me a harder edge line. So it takes the sculpting details and it applies a effect that'll polish out these edges. So when we're dealing with hard surfacing and things like that, we can simply go across, apply a nice clean line, and then use control drag with that polish option on to go through and refine this and make this cleaner. So here I'll just go through and maybe simply just dig into the surface to create a more creased edge and continue to polish out these borders. So making the draw size smaller here to get a cleaner line. And using the Damien standard brush with a big draw size, you'll see it will push into the surface a bit more. So going in and making this very large, you see we get a very steep sort of transition. Now making this smaller, we're going to get a finer, cleaner line without as much of a dip in that surface. So choosing to press the S key and adjust that draw size will help to go through and just create these nice, clean, polished out lines. So that wraps up creating a simple cup using the Y symmetry radial option and using the move Damien standard and standard brush. So in the next part, let's take a look at doing a new mesh and experiment with some other brushes.